In this video, we'll take a look at an introduction to exponential functions. So an exponential function is a function of the form f of x is equal to a to the power of x, where in this case, a is just a constant. So what I've got here on the right is a diagram, a sketch of the curve, y equals 2 to the power of x here. Okay. Now, this is an example of an exponential function. But how would we draw something like this? Well, one way that I could do this would be to use a table of values. So what I'm going to do here is pick some x values, find the respective y values, and then plot those points and just join them up. Okay, so that's one way we can do this. So we're going to find our y values. So when x is, say, minus 2, let's just keep going up here. So minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. What I'm going to do then is find the respective y values. So when x is equal to minus 2, we get y is equal to 2 to the minus 2, which is the same as 1 over 2 squared, which would give me 1 over 4. Okay, so just ignore the fact that I'm drawing it kind of on the diagram, um, but that's what we get there. So we get a quarter. When x is minus 1, that's going to give me 2 to the minus 1, so that's 1 over 2 to the power of 1, giving me a half. When x is 0 now, so that's going to be 2 to the power of 0, so remember anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So I'm just going to simply get 1 there. Then we have 2 to the power of 1. So in that case, 2 to the power of 1 would give me 2. And then finally, 2 to the power of 2, giving me 4. And all I'm going to do now is plot these points here. So I've got minus 2 and a quarter. That's going to be there. I've then got minus 1 and a half, say there. I've then got 0, 1. And notice now that this is where it intersects with the y-axis. So that's 0, 1. I've then got 1, 2. So one unit across, two units up, let's say there. And then finally, two four. So two units across and four up. Okay, let's say there. And there we have it. So that would be our points. All I do then is just join these up and we'd get something that looks like this. Okay. You might want an extra point either side, but either way, you'll get something with this shape. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this basic shape. And where this basic shape comes from here is the fact that when x is negative, the growth is quite slow, okay? We've got this slow growth here. However, once we move into positive values of x here, then you can see it grows quite quick, okay? Another key point to note here is that it intersects with the y-axis at 0, 1, okay? Key point there. And finally, all I want to finish with here is the fact that this curve, so y equals 2 to the power of x, has an asymptote. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this in a different pen color, just to make it clear. We have an asymptote here with the x-axis, okay? And the reason for that is because our curve here never actually intersects with the x-axis, okay? In terms of the negative values here, it would keep going, keep going, keep going, but it would never touch the x-axis, okay? So we have an asymptote. We have an asymptote here at y equals 0, or in other words, the x-axis, okay? So that's what I wanted to start with here. What we're going to take a look at now is the gradient function and a special type of exponential function. So what I've got here is three sketches of three different exponential functions. Now, on the first one here, this curve here denoted with the black pen, this is y equals 2 to the power of x. Okay. For this one here, again, this black curve, it's a little bit trickier to see, but in this case, this is y equals 3 to the power of x. And then finally, for this last one here, what I've got now is y equals 4 to the power of x. So 4 to the power of x. So it's a little bit tricky to see. It's easier if you draw it on one set of axes. But the larger the value of the constant here, so if it's 2, 3, or 4, for example, the larger that value is, then the quicker the growth is. Okay, so that's one point to make here in regards to this constant. But what I'm particularly concerned about here is the gradient function. And I'm using this blue curve here to represent that. Okay, now I'm not concerned about how you find the gradient function for this video. Okay, you'll see that later on in the course. But for this video, don't worry about finding the gradient function yet for something like this. Okay. But what I am concerned about here is how the behavior of the gradient function is related to the original function. Now, what you can see is as this um, value here of a, this constant grows, then you can see, for example, that it's 
quite far away. I'd say here at this point, for y equals 2 to the power of x, so when a is 2. So that's when a is 2. For this one here, y equals 3 to the power of x, this is when a is equal to 3. And what you can see is the gradient function is actually pretty close to the original function. And then when we get to 4 here, when a is equal to 4, you can see we're moving further away now. Okay, and that gap, that gap is growing again. So the question here is, is there a special property or is there something important between a equals 2 and a equals 3? In other words, what I'm asking here is, is there any point between a equals 2 and a equals 3 where the gradient function is equal to the original function? And we do have that point, okay? So clearly it has to occur between 2 and 3, okay? Because when it's a equals 2, it's below the original function. And then when a is equal to 3, it's above the original function, if that makes sense. And this value occurs when a is approximately, so when a is approximately 2.71828, okay? Now this is actually a special number. And this is what we call um, Euler's number, okay? And the way we represent this is using E, okay? So E approximately 2.71A to A and so on. I only know it's to that far, um, but that would carry on, okay? This is a special number. It's irrational, just like pi. Um, so this is something that you will see now quite a lot in your studies for A-level maths. Um, very, very important number. So... What I'd have here then is y equals e to the power of x, okay? This is an example again of an exponential function. And when a is equal to e here, okay, so that's going to be 2.71828 and so on, then in that case, the gradient function will always be equal to the original function, okay? So if you were to sketch that, y equals e to the x, and then you were to also sketch the um, derivative, so all of these blue curves here is dy by dx, so dy by dx, dy by dx again, and dy by dx. If you were to sketch that for y equals e to the x, then what you'd have is essentially the blue curve being on top of the black curve, okay? So that's the special property there of a being equal to 2.71828, we get y equals e to the x there, okay? Now, to finish with here, let's just quickly mention differentiation here. So all I'm going to do is clear the screen, just so we've got enough room to finish with here. So if I have the function f of x is equal to e power of x here, the special exponential function that we've just mentioned, then when I differentiate that, so when I differentiate that, so I'm going to get f prime of x here, then all I get is the original function. That's what we just said there. Okay, so I get e to the power of x. Okay, and using the alternative notation here for differentiation, if I have y is equal to e to the x, then once I differentiate that, I get dy by dx, dy by dx, and that would again be e to the power of x there. Okay, there's also one other scenario to consider here, and that's when we have a constant in front of the x here in the power. So, for example, if I have f of x is equal to e to the kx, so where k here is just a constant, then once I differentiate that, I get f prime of x. And what I get now is k times e to the power of kx, okay? So the k comes out in front, and we times it by e. So I get k e to the kx there, okay? And again, just using the alternative notation here, using y equals e to the kx. Then once I differentiate, I get dy by dx. And again, I just get this result here. So k e to the kx there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our very brief introduction to exponential functions. And that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at exponential modeling.